Good morning, Philippines, and good evening, U.S. A big mabuhay around the world to everyone else. Hope everyone else is doing great out there. As you can see, I'm a little tired, but I'm up here this morning. It is a great day outside in the Philippines. I don't know if I can... You can see the, the sunlight coming through there. It is it is really a great day. It rained cats and dogs last night. It was really raining hard. And uh, I have a little bit of an allergy or whatever, and so does my uh, son. But, man, we had a – I was waking up a little I, – I was like, what is that noise? What is that noise? It was raining cats and dogs. It was raining really, really hard last night here in the Philippines in Manila and the great Bonifacio Global City. Uh, but right now, the sun has come up, the dawn, it's clear, and it's a great day to be here in the Philippines. And uh, I thought I'd just give a shout out to everyone out in the U.S. I hope everyone's doing well out there. It is almost February. Winter is almost over on the east coast of the U.S. Uh, we had left the east coast of the U.S. in November right around Thanksgiving, just as winter was pulling in. It's been kind of a mild winter out there, but I know a lot of people are wishing for warmer weather, and you couldn't get better weather than right here in Manila. It's going to get a little little uh, summery around here, a little hot and humid, uh, just like Florida, but it's still going to be great weather here uh, in the Philippines. And I know some of you are probably also looking – for a beautiful Filipino wife. So I hope you found this channel because you found the right place. This is the right channel for you. And there's many, many ways to meet a great Filipino wife. In the West nowadays, in America and Europe, sometimes it can be difficult to find a lifelong companion. And in the Philippines, there are many, many women here that are looking for a lifelong companion. And so these two needs, especially for European and American men, kind of meet up with the desire of many uh, single women in the Philippines. And there's all different types of women in the Philippines to sort of meet, meet your sort of criteria for your long-lasting uh, uh, partner uh, in life. And to, to meet, you know, your you know, all your desires and also all your needs and emotional and even financial. They are very, very great partners in marriage. And I know some of you aren't looking for marriage, but believe me, the best way to have that bond with a Filipina is to really marry them. And then you really develop a lifelong, not only friendship, but also partner for life. And so I hope that's what many of you are looking for in the Philippines. And there's many ways to do it. Uh, you know, the, many Filipinas are here. I mean, the other day we just met a really intelligent and, quite frankly, very tall Filipina at 5'10". At 5'10". So there are, there are all different types of uh, women. Uh, she happens to be uh, a little bit older. But she, you know, she works for a very, very great company, international company, banking. And she happens to also be looking uh, for a spouse. But as with many Filipinas, especially the professionals, they're very, very shy. But even the uh, women who are not professionals uh, are very shy as well. They're embarrassed uh, to go online. And so really you're, you're sort of, um, you know, uh, objective is to really find many of these women because they're really the ones that are very honest, sincere, and also beautiful, uh, especially the ones that are shy. They're, they're the ones you really want, uh, to be honest with you, because they're not really looking uh, for money or for anything like that. They just really want a relationship. And many of them have spent their lives supporting their families um, and they're supporting uh, other relatives and they, they really need to, you know, they, they want to have a relationship of their own. And it, they feel that time has kind of like, you know, left them by. You know, in the U.S., uh, to meet uh, a woman in her 30s and 40s now is not sort of too old. You know, back in, when I was growing up, you know, women in their late 30s or 40s, you know, many men would not consider them for marriage in the U.S. as, you know, as bad as that is. Uh, in the Philippines, they still have this traditional 
sort of um, belief that when they reach, you know, even their mid thirties, like when I met, good morning, Angelica, how are you? Nice to see you. Good morning. God bless you. So, um, you know, many uh, women in the Philippines, they, they believe when they have sort of reached that point, uh, you know, in their mid thirties to, you know, to early forties that, you know, life is, is kind of passed them by. And so, um, in the U.S., you know, women, you know, get married in their 40s, even 50s, even later. But for Filipinas, they kind of view themselves as being, you know, you know, I hate to say, you know, past the expiration date. They're too old. And they sort of, they sort of give up on that. Hey, it's Snoop Doggy Snacks. How are you, man? How's it going? So if you're new to the channel, hey, please give me a like and please subscribe if you can. That would be awesome to help further the channel. And, uh, you know, say some comments down here so I can help you guys out. I'm willing to answer any questions that you have, right? So, um, you know, as I was saying with the Filipinas, you know, for many of them, when they reach their 30s or even early 40s, for them, they, they think that, you know, they're going to be content with their life the way it is, uh, that they're going to stay with their families. They're not going to really find anybody. And that's going to be the end of it. And so like the woman we were talking to, she desperately, you know, this is a, a great Filipina, very attractive, in this case, very, very tall at 5'10", um, and very educated. And she kind of thinks the same way. And I said, you have to get out of this mentality that you're too old. Because in, the, in Europe and America, being 39 or 40 is not too old anymore. You know, you're, you're still uh, desirable by many men. And, you know, um, I hope she, she took our little uh, speech to heart, but like many Filipinas, even my wife, when I met her at 35, she was like, I'm, I'm too old. I'm an old maid. I'm, I'm not going to find anybody. There's no one out there for me. And uh, there's nothing I can do about it. And her sister, um, a Pinky, convinced her to go online. And my, my wife, you know, at that point, you know, for some reason she was willing to listen to somebody, but she was taking care of her parents, taking care of other people, and she didn't want to live the rest of her life alone. And so she jumped in and she went online and she made her postings and she was willing to do that. And she told, you know, the, the beautiful girl that we met, you know, she said, you have to have the guts to do it. Uh, but, you know, many Filipinas aren't going to do that. And so, I mean, I guess there's kind of two different ways to meet, you know, the beautiful Filipina of, of your of your dreams here. And one is to go online and to go to different websites. And there's a ton of different websites out there. I prefer the Christian websites because I think that those uh, people tend to be more sincere. That's just my belief. And, and that's when, when I met my wife, who was a Christian website. Um and the one way to be sincere when you, you're meeting Filipinas is just to be honest with them. I think the real danger comes from a lot of Americans or Westerners or Europeans trying to impress uh, women uh, or these Filipinas in particular. Many Filipinas are not looking for millionaires. You know, they're just looking for honest, hardworking uh, spouses. Hey, thank you, Snoop Doggy. Thank you. I know I almost have reached that 200. I'm trying to get close to that, you know. So thank you so much for that. I appreciate that. And, you know, we're trying to get to that magic mark of a 1,000. So at least when we're making some videos, we get a little bit of money back. So I, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Snoop Doggy. And uh, for anyone else, yeah, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, if you think we're doing a good job, if you like what we're saying and, uh, you know, give us a thumbs up, you know, right now, if you can, uh, every little bit helps on social media. That's the way it goes, you know? So if you like anything we're saying, anything we're doing, please give us a thumbs up, please subscribe. All right. So, you know, what I, what I would do is go on these websites. Now, some of them are for free. Uh, I would choose the free ones. I know there's like a, some, uh, free, um, Christian dating websites. And I did a, I did a video about this like, maybe about a month ago and it's Christian dating for free or something like that. 
and you can get in there and there's nothing really special about the website. It doesn't have anything special uh, like, you know, kind of matching you up with anybody. But I would just go out there and just be honest, say, you know what, I'm, I don't really have a lot of money, but, you know, I have a decent apartment. You know, I'm a good guy and I'm just looking for a, a, a partner to spend my life with. And I would be, you know, serious at that point, whether you're going to go for marriage or not. Uh, you have to be very honest. In the U.S., it's become very fashionable and very accepted. And, you know, un you know, unfortunately, I think many people have been forced into just living to one with one another, mainly because of legal aspects of having, uh, you know, previous children or previous divorce. And emotionally and financially, they don't want to get tied up in a marriage again. But for many Filipinas... You know, marriage is what they're looking for. Now, of course, there's lots of Filipinas out there that maybe they're not looking for marriage. That's something that you have to work out with them. But most Filipinas are looking for marriage, and the relationship will be stronger if, if you go in that direction. But, of course, there, you know, it's, it's very difficult when you don't know someone if you're going to trust them or not. Um, and that's something that you have to build that relationship with when, when you meet the Filipina. You have to, uh, you know, talk to them about that and meet them. Uh, and so, like, in my particular case, you know, I made a profile. is very honest. And that's what I would recommend. You know, at the time I was a teacher, I said, you know, I work with a lot of Filipinas and Filipinos. And that's the kind of person I want to marry. And I guarantee you that I will take a trip to the Philippines. I'm not wasting your time. And that's the other thing to keep in the back of your head. You know, in America... Uh, if someone doesn't respond to us instantly, you know, especially when we give them an email or something like that, we tend to get, you know, a little upset about it and a little annoyed that they don't like me or why aren't they responding? I just want to say, if you are dealing with Filipinas, especially, you know, wherever they are in the Philippines, you have to give them time. Uh, <clears throat> number one, they may not have access to the Internet. Uh, phone plans here in the Philippines are very, very uh, bad. They have to pay a lot of money for them, and the, they don't give much for them. They don't get a lot of data, for instance, and so they can't just, you know, automatically go on Facebook or something like that or a website because they'll run out of out of uh, data. Or and, and money is very, very it's very expensive for them to buy these plans, even for a month. So you can't really get an all data plan in the Philippines. It just isn't possible. So you have to be patient for them to go to a place that has free Wi-Fi and they can go in there, but they can't go in there all the time. Uh, if they have Wi-Fi in their house, they probably have some money, either from someone sending them money from overseas or someone in the house is you know working or they're professionals and working themselves. But you know, for many uh, households in the Philippines, Wi-Fi is a luxury item. So you have to be patient with the Filipinas, even after you make the posting and everything, because it's going to take time for them to get back to you. The other thing, they're probably going to get a lot of responses. My wife, when she put up her picture, she had like three or 400 emails. Um, and I would think that that would happen with a lot of Filipinas as well. There's a lot more men than women. Um and so they get a lot of a lot of people, you know, responding to them and they tend to be, you know, very desirable from a, an American or Western perspective, because even if they're older, they tend to look younger and they tend to be very fit, meaning they don't tend to be uh, overweight. Many of the Filipinas, mainly because of their diet, uh, they, you know, they're just eating fish and rice mainly uh, and also because, you know, they're also very busy. You know, they have to work jobs and the commuting and everything else. So they tend to be, you know, very desirable and attractive to the West. Um, so they get a lot of responses out of this. So you have to be kind of patient with them. They will get back to you. The things about most Filipinas that I have to honestly say is that they're very respectful. That's the culture here. And they will get back to you and they'll be very polite. All the women that I corresponded with. Now, granted, this is a while ago before I got married and uh, moved to the Philippines, but they're also very polite. And so in this culture of the Philippines, if you really want to meet a Filipina and a really nice and proper Filipina, you want to be polite. 
And that's something that the uh, culture really respects and encourages. That's not sort of the same way in the U.S. where, you know, politeness is not really uh, greeted with enthusiasm like it used to be. But if you're very polite to a Filipina, they will like that. They'll think that you were raised the right way they, and that you also uh, respect them and that you have a future together if they, they notice that right away if you're going to be polite. So I would be very polite in the emails. I really wouldn't rush things. I wouldn't push things. I wouldn't do inappropriate jokes or anything like that. Or And you have to be careful with jokes because even though many Filip you know, all the Filipinas know some, you know, know some type of English, you know, jokes are hard to translate. And so it's better just to be, you know, very basic in your jokes uh, because they might think that your joke was weird or something. Uh, it's hard to do that. Hey, Rama, how are you? All the way from Russia, huh? And actually, you know, I am part Russian, believe it or not. Um, part of my ancestry goes all the way back to Russia from 1900 when they immigrated to the U.S. So, uh, Roma, if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. Please hit that like button. We're trying to climb to that magic number of 1,000 subscribers. So if you like what we have to say and anything that we're doing here, please hit subscribe and please hit like. We'd really appreciate that. And we're glad to have you here. If you have any questions, please, you know, push it right down there. Ask any questions that you want. I'll try to do my best to answer them. All right. So like I was saying, you know, being very polite and very honest uh, really gets you a long way uh, with Filipina women. Uh, and, and respecting them and just being uh, sort of a, a nice person. You know, in the U.S., when I was trying to, you know, find a wife, basically, um, it's not, you know, politeness and being cheerful are not necessarily something in American culture that's really highly sort of looked after. Um, to me, it's not really respected anymore. But if you are that way with Filipinas, you will get a positive reaction back. They will think that, you know, you're an, a person that's suitable for them. And so that's, <clears throat> excuse me, that's what I would do. You know, so I would try to find the free dating website. And like I said, I would work with a Christian website. And there's one out there called Free Christian Dating. I would make my profile. I would try to do an honest picture. I wouldn't, you know, if you have like, you know, even, even I, right, you try to take a picture a little bit you know, when you were a few years uh, younger, that's okay. But I wouldn't take something from like, you know, if you're th like 40, you know, something when you're 22 or something, you know, but something that's, it may, may make you look a little better, but isn't too far from reality. I, you know, a good picture, you know, and just be honest with them and say what you're looking for, you know, what your, what type of life you live there. Uh, in your respective country, if you're going to bring her back to your country, you know, or you're going to move to the Philippines. Um, and just be honest and, and, and just say, you know, I will come and meet you. And now, you know, like I said, the other thing that you have going on here with these online relationships is mistrust and distrust on both sides. And so even when you meet a woman in your home country, everyone is suspicious in the U.S., everyone is super sus uh, suspicious of each other right now. Uh, I would say no one really, you know, takes everything for granted or, you know, when they meet someone, they're very suspicious in, in the U.S. right now. And that's because everyone's been divorced like once or twice or broken up with all the relationships. So, you know, you have to, you know, if you if any relationship is going to work, even an online one, you have to have a certain level of trust. You can't be suspicious all the time. Now, I'm not saying that you shouldn't, you know, uh, question things, you know, because when someone's online, there's a lot of scammers online. You have to be careful. And like I said in my previous videos, you know, you don't need to send any money at all. If a Filipina is asking for money, it's a very bad sign, okay? Unless you've known each other for years or, you know, you're in a relationship already. If you're not in a relationship and a Philippine is asking you for money, that's, that's not a very good sign. 
Now, if you, like I said, if you, <clears throat> like when I met my wife, I met her online. I'm just giving you a timeline. I met her like in June or something like that. And so we were corresponding. And after we had met for a long time, excuse me, and we had chatted a lot. Uh, and then eventually we talked on the phone. Uh, I started sending her small gifts. And this was for like, you know, Valentine's Day was coming up. Uh, and I sent her a very, very, you know, small gift of roses or a little stuffed toy. And it was not, she didn't, did not ask for it. I just thought that it would be a nice gesture. And I think it might have cost me like 15 US dollars at the time. And she was very appreciative and she liked it. But it was not something that she asked for. And it wasn't like I, I sent her money. Uh, to take care of anything at her house. As a matter of fact, when I met her for the first time and she had spent, you know, for her, in her life, she had spent a lot of money because uh, she had some, uh, needed some dental work and I offered to pay for it. She goes, no, we have not made any decision yet about our future. I will not accept any money. And so, you know, a good Filipina, an honest Filipina is not going to take your money. Because, you know, they're very proud people. They might be people that don't have money and they may be poor, you know, by Western standards, but they're very proud people and they're not going to take money if they're, you know, legit. OK, they're not going to do it. Now, if you offer to take them out to eat or send small gifts, that that's something completely different. So, like, you know, when you meet these women online, you know, take your make a good profile, an honest profile of yourself. Be cheerful with them and be patient be patient they have lots and lots of emails um to go through and uh that being said you probably want to find a profile that hasn't really been there a long time because they're getting lots of emails to shift through now what i did and this is a uh, first i've never i don't think i mentioned the previous videos I didn't put a picture of myself up the first time. I said in my in my description, I will email you a picture if you're interested in me. I'm not going to bother posting a picture if you're not interested. And uh, my wife, you, you know, after I uh, married her, she goes, that was interesting. And I, I, I kind of found that interesting. You didn't put a picture up. And so, hey, you may want to try that. I don't know. It worked for me. Um and I, it drew attention to me. And after and I and after uh, a couple of weeks, I didn't send. After I met her online, you know, with emails, I didn't send the picture right away. I wait for I waited for her to uh, request it, and that was with the other Filipinas that I also met too. I didn't send the picture right away, and uh, I don't know if that played in my favor or not in my favor. That's just how I felt at the time, and uh, it made them curious. Uh, so that might be something you can do to help your, you know, to sort of get you uh, over the other guys in front of the line there for you, you know, make them interested in you. But, um, you know, you, there's in all the women, there's lots of women here, too. And so, and like I said, this culture is really pushing women to get married. It's encouraging women to get married, unlike the, the West uh, in Europe and America, where marriage is not really being promoted as much as it used to, especially in the 60s and 70s or even 80s. Uh, in the Philippines, women are encouraged, you know, to go out and get married and have a family. So there's lots of women in the Philippines. Now, the second way, if you don't really want to go the online route, is to come here in person. And it can be a heck of a trip, depending on where you're coming from. And what I mean by heck of a trip, it's a long trip. Um, if you're coming from Russia, that's going to be a long trip. Um, and I know, uh, you know, I think there's a, um, a couple of people on YouTube, uh, Roma, uh, that have found people from Russia that have found um, relationships here in the Philippines. And I, I'm thinking of one in particular, one girl who found the guy here in the Philippines from Russia, if I'm not mistaken. But, you know, um, and I think she met, I don't I forget how they met. It might've been online. I can't remember. Um, but in any event, the other way of finding a woman is to come here and it's 
very easy to meet women here. Um, you don't need to have a, a friend here. You don't need to know anybody here. The women are very friendly. Um, and all you have to do is basically be a gentleman and be polite. And they're attracted to foreigners. And that's what, you know, most foreigners don't really realize that as soon as you've come off the plane in the Philippines, you'll be attracted to many women. And all you have to do is to, you know, be polite and to talk to them. And you can ask them, you know, exchange Facebooks or something like that. And they will want to meet you. It, it's, it's the God's honest truth. Um, now, I didn't go that way. But other men have done that. You can go to the malls and just strike up a conversation with someone at McDonald's or with one of the workers in department stores or even if you, you know, uh, in the airports or what have you. They're very, very approachable women. Uh, now, some of them may be very shy and that's the way they're taught. Like, so I'll give you an example. My wife, when she was coming, you know, after we had gone through the visa process and she had her passport and visa and she was flying to meet me um, in Hawaii, that's where I lived at the time, as, and uh, she was flying on the plane <laughs> and, uh, at the time, some guy, quote unquote, some guy was talking to her and she wouldn't talk to him. And so coming off the plane, right, she, she's talking to me about this guy and the guy comes over and the guy happens to be uh, uh, working with me, uh, a workmate of mine. And I, he's a nice guy. And he's actually married to a Filipina, but he's American. You know, and most Americans, excuse me, are, um, you know, they're very talkative and they, they like to meet people right away in planes. Europeans are not necessarily that way. Uh, so they expect everyone to be like that. So he comes over and he says to my wife, why didn't you talk to me? She goes, oh, well, sorry, I'm sorry. And then my wife goes, we're told in the Philippines not to talk to strangers. If we don't know them, we don't talk to them. And so um, I asked her, though, though, but if, a, if an attractive man came up to you, a foreigner, would you talk to them? She goes, yeah, I probably would. <laughs> so maybe she didn't find him attractive. I don't know. But um, so what I'm saying is if you meet a Filipina, most of them will smile. And they'll let you know right away if they're interested. They'll say, hello, sir. And they'll kind of smile and talk to you. And uh, they'll let you know. They'll, but there may be some who are shy. That does not mean they don't like you. It just means they're shy. And if you really find that woman attractive, if you go back the next day, if you're able to, if she's a worker someplace uh, or, you know, you know, maybe at, even at a hotel if she's staying there, if you talk to them another time, they may uh, be uh, be more brave and talk back to you. It does not mean immediately that they dislike you. It just means they're very shy. They're very humble. And they may, you know, may not know what to say to you. So you have to kind of, you know, just kind of be charming and talk to them. But like I said, there's plenty of women if you come to the Philippines. And that's the other thing. Uh, you know, where to go in the Philippines. And that's really up to you. I, I prefer, you know, uh, the cities. Uh, I, I didn't really meet a province girl. Uh, but if I had to meet a province girl, I would actually pay for her to visit me in one of the cities. I don't, I mean, if I were coming to the Philippines for the first time, I don't know if I'd really want to go out way out into the province area. I'd meet them in the largest town. But, you know, where you look, I mean, I mean, I think the women are, you know, most of them, 99% of them are all great women um, in the Philippines. It just depends, you know, how you meet and where you meet. If you're coming to visit in the Philippines, like I said, I would probably go to Cebu or go to Manila. I know there's people going to Davao. Um, it all depends. I think Cebu and Manila are safer places to go. Um then, you know, further down south, there's a lot of conflict down south, even though there's more foreigners now moving down south. And they, there's a lot of people that meet Filipinas down south in Mindanao. Uh, I prefer to be a little more cautious security wise. And I think Cebu or Manila would be a little bit better, especially for your first time. And uh, that's where I would start looking. That's where I would go. 
And for me, I wanted someone who was college educated. I was looking for someone close in my age. At that time, I was in my 30s. Um, and so I was looking for someone my own age. Um, you know, there may be some of you looking for someone younger. I mean, and you can certainly find a younger girl in the Philippines. That's really not difficult to do. And so that's the one thing that I would stress is that, you know, uh, in the West, um, you know, it seems like it's very difficult to find someone who does want a relationship and get married. And you kind of feel like you want to make something work, even if maybe you don't really like that person so much. In the Philippines, if you meet someone that you're not really sure about, it, I mean, but you have to be honest with that relationship. Uh, if you feel after a couple of months or after you met them once or twice, um, you know, there's always another uh, woman to meet. I don't mean that in a bad way. I just mean like if you have your doubts, it doesn't seem to be like you're a good match. There's somebody else and it's not very difficult uh, or impossible to meet that person as it is in the West or America. Uh, but I wouldn't say like there's there tend to be foreigners that come here and they keep going from woman to woman. I, I just don't think that's fair for the Filipina. Uh, that's just my personal belief. I don't like getting involved in people's relationships or that kind of thing. But for the Filipina to be involved with someone and they don't get married after a certain amount of time, their family is going to look upon them very badly. Um, and so, you know, try to work things out with that person if you can. If you can't, well, that's another deal. But like if I were coming to the Philippines, I would definitely try to meet more than one girl. And uh, I tell my wife this, she doesn't really seem to remember, but you know, I was after time though, I think kind of the person that you like will kind of show up after a while. So if you're online and you're corresponding for months and you're, and then eventually you're talking on the phone, usually, you know, you'll find that person you want to meet. Maybe a few that you want to meet. It really depends. Now, my wife, even though she had four or five hundred, you know, three or four hundred emails and lots of guys looking, uh, looking to meet her, she said after a while, after I met you, I stopped corresponding with them because I didn't want to confuse myself. Uh, she didn't want to, you know, keep, you know, she just wanted to focus on me, and I, in, in return, I focused on her, but and she didn't. I don't know. I told her the other day, and she didn't quite like this. I said, listen, but I had a few emails that I kept because, you know, what would happen if I came to the Philippines and it didn't really click? Uh, really, we didn't get along or something. I go, I came all this way and it's very expensive. And she looked at me like, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I said, sorry about that. But um, I did have, I would keep a few emails with me and, and say, maybe you might be there or something like that. Uh, to meet them, but I would try to focus on one person. That's just my strategy. You may not want to do that, and uh, you may come to the Philippines. And if you're going to meet, you know, a few different girls, what I would do is be honest with them and say, "Listen, I'm going to be in Manila. Uh, I'm going to be here uh, or Cebu, and uh, I'll pay for your way to visit me in the city. You can bring a friend with you." You can stay overnight for a couple of days or whatever, and we can meet and see what happens, you know. Uh, but, you know, they're going to want to bring a friend or family member with them, and you can understand that. They don't, you know, they hear also very bad stories about foreigners, which is um, kind of funny because we hear bad stories about them, but they also hear bad stories about foreigners. And so they're going to want to bring a relative with them. Um, and say, okay, fine, that's that's fine, you know, and, uh, you know, we'll have a good time. If they like you and they feel they can trust you, you know, they'll tell the relative or friend, hey, you know, I want to be alone or something like that. Um, and they'll let you know about that, you know, whether it's a day or two days. And, you know, let them know that, you know, I'm only going to be here for a few days. You know, that's it. And then, you know, maybe you want to meet somebody else. You know, I mean, it's like I said, it's completely up to you uh, how you handle this. Um, and probably, you know, you probably want to meet a couple of girls unless you really fall in love with one um, that you meet online, you know, but you just never know. But I, I would say to you that unlike Western women and American women, 
that these women are very sincere. And if they're very, very uh, nice with you on the phone and in their emails, that's pretty much what you're going to find when you meet them. It's not one of these things where, you know, you meet online in the U.S. and you meet the person. They're kind of like, nah, nah, nah. No, you know, Filipinas uh, really, in my opinion, form a bond with the person that they're meeting. And they, they you know, they, they actually may fall in love with you a little bit, too. Um, and so I don't think that in many cases when you meet them, unless you've really lied about yourself and how you look, um, they're not going to be that disappointed. They're really not going to be number one, cause you're a foreigner and for them, you're very attractive. But secondly, they, they actually do fall in love with people. Even if it's online, they develop an attachment. That's how Filipinas are most of them. And so, you know, I don't think you really have to worry, um, uh, about, you know, them not liking you, you know, it's, it's whether you want to meet other girls or, you know, you, you know, because you just want to do that. You just want to, as we in the U.S., we call that playing the field. You don't want to sort of bet on one girl. You want to meet a few. Uh, that's entirely up to you, you know. Uh, I just had, you know, in, in my case, I kind of was falling in love with my wife. And I really didn't feel that need, even though, like I said, I did have emails available to me. Uh you know, that I, that I could use once I got here. So I would keep a few emails with me, although it sounds maybe not completely honest. I would keep a few emails with me in case it didn't work out. Uh, or I would set up a couple of uh, meetings with women, uh, maybe two or three or something like that while you're here, because, you know, it's very expensive to get to the Philippines. Now, as far as accommodations, it's not hard to find a good hotel um, in the Philippines. One hotel that, you know, and I stayed the first time, I stayed at a very expensive hotel uh, because I wanted security and things like that. Uh, but it was, you know, it was kind of expensive for me to come back the second time. Uh, so I stayed in another place. Now, you could stay at this place. They're still around. It's called the City Garden Hotel in McCaddy. They're a very local hotel. I, I'm not being paid or anything to promote them. Believe me, I'm not. I only got, I got less than 200 subscribers. But I, you know, I, my wife would stay there when she had to do things in Manila, and I would stay there. And they're a very good locally run hotel, relatively cheap um, in Makati. They have other branches in Manila, but they, they run a pretty good hotel. That's the City Garden Hotel. You can check them out. But there's so many hotels now, you know, that you can get online or Airbnb, you know, that you don't really need recommendations anymore, especially with Airbnb. And as a matter of fact, like we're I'm um, living right now here in Acacia and you can get an Airbnb with great security with a pool and everything. And so I, I'd probably go Airbnb, to be honest with you, in a nice condo facility. And then, you know, you could rent one uh, a room for the girl. They can just visit you or whatever you're going to do. But I would I would actually, you know, probably have a separate room for the girls, um, you know, with one of their escorts. Otherwise, they're not going to feel that you respect them. Um, they may come, but they're going to feel nervous and also that you don't respect them. Uh, so I would actually have a separate room uh, in that case, you know, if they're coming from the province. If they're from Manila or from Cebu, you don't really need to get them a separate room. Only if they're traveling from an another province area or town uh, to be respectful to them, you know. So... In any event, like I said, kind of give give a, a, a quick rundown. You know, I'd get online. I'd go to a free dating website. I wouldn't waste my money. It seems like they're really expensive nowadays. I'd make an honest profile saying what you're looking for. If you're only looking for a girlfriend, then say that. If you're looking for a wife, then say that as well. Um, and tell them that you will be coming to the Philippines. And then, you know, just pick it up from there. Be sincere. Be polite. They respect that. And just let it take it from there. Um, if you don't really like the online thing, then, of course, what I would do is I would, you know, come to the Philippines and come for a great time and go down the Boracay, which is the beach resort, or even around Manila or around different areas and just be very smiley, be, be, you know, have a great time and talk to people. 
and be very approachable. The, the girls will smile. They'll go, hello, sir. And it's just an invitation to talk. And they will want to meet you as a foreigner, very desirable. So you could meet a lot of women just that way, just going to the malls, going to the resorts, uh, meeting the workers and also the women that are there. And you'll meet plenty of women that way if you don't want to do it online. Or if you meet online and you come here, you can also meet girls that way as well. You just have to be approachable. They're not going to come to you because that would be considered bad manners and uh, you'd be too forward uh, for a girl to come walk up to a guy. It's not considered good manners or breeding here in the Philippines. So you're going to have to go up to them. Remember that they're shy. In emails, remember that they might not have access to internet and they're very busy with commuting and working. So if you're very, if you're patient and you're polite, you will meet a great Filipina. You will. It's not hard to do. Um, and like I said, but, you know, once you meet them and you love them, you know, there are things that occur, such as the visa process and also long distance relationship and things like that until you're united. And um, a great show to watch. Well, not a great show, but it kind of tells you some things is 90 Day Fiance uh, and uh, TLC Network in the U.S., although some of it's kind of made up, but some of it's true. You know, waiting for the visa, at least in the U.S., is kind of a, a difficult process, an expensive process. Uh, in other countries, I'm not so sure about. But, you know, it's doable. But you just have to have the courage and the guts to do it and the patience. And that's the thing. When you're dealing with people with foreign cultures and speak different languages, you have to be patient and not to judge them too much or be very suspicious of them. And if you are, we had a German friend of ours who, you know, married a Thai girl. He, you know, he went back and forth for a couple of years before he decided to marry her. It was his second marriage and he took his time. And that could be what you do in the Philippines too. Just know, you tell the girl you're serious, but you're going to take your time. But in any event, I hope I gave you some good advice. I hope I gave you a way that you can meet the Filipina of your dream because you can. And you'll, you'll find a partner and lifelong partner and a beautiful girl that will be there for you. So everyone out there, I know it's getting late there in, in America. Let me see. What is it over there? It's uh, I think it's, is it 11? Uh, maybe 10 or 11 o'clock. And the rest of the world, I'm not so sure. We had our friend from Russia. So I don't know what time it is in Russia. I have no idea. But just a little reminder, if you like what we're doing or like what you say that we said here, please hit that subscribe button. Please, please, <laughs> please hit that subscribe button. We'd love to have you as a regular subscriber. We think what we do here is valuable and I think entertaining. So please subscribe and please hit that like button. All right. Otherwise, have a great day. Good luck with your journey. Good luck with everything in your life and especially with meeting a beautiful Filipina. I'll see you soon out there. Take care and be well. God bless.